So what you're looking at right now is my temporary solution to this uh, knuckle problem that I've been having. So if you remember in the last video, it ended off with me trying to install this lift kit and ending up with two passenger side uh, steering knuckles. And obviously that doesn't work too well. They are specific side to side. And uh, I got a hold of the company that I bought the lift through and they are getting a hold of a driver side knuckle and then obviously getting that to me. So that's probably gonna be a couple weeks away, something like that. You really don't know how long shipping's gonna take and how long processing and all that's gonna take. So I actually grabbed a set of knuckles that my buddy had sitting around. Um, these are actually set of narrow knuckles from BDS, so they're an inch and a half narrower than your usual lift knuckle, but that's no big deal, which actually solves the fact that I'm missing a CV spacer as well, because I only have one of those. That is also getting shipped up to me, but... So that is the temporary solution for this, so that I can at least have the truck movable. I don't know that my wheels and tires are going to show up before that knuckle, which would be nice if they did, but if they don't, they don't, whatever. But anyway, I have new knuckles, new used knuckles, at least get me going for now. And I already finished up the passenger side, about 99% complete, still need to do the final tightening on everything once it's sitting on the ground. Um, and then I kind of went into the driver's side here. I have a lot of it done, still needs a shock, sway bar link and brakes, uh, ABS sensor plugged in, that kind of thing. But I'll do all that off camera so I can finish the front up at least. I can set it down on the ground and then tighten everything and then uh, probably start moving into the back. Just about have the back all complete. Uh, blocks are in. Um, if you saw, I cut the U-bolts. I've done quite a few of these uh, older trucks and there's no point in even trying to fight with the old U-bolts because you're not gonna reuse them anyway. So just cut them out, put the new ones in. Went actually really smoothly. Uh, the shocks are in. I have a set of airbag spacers to go between this and the mount. They are just drying right now. I just painted them. So those will go in. I will have to deal with uh, routing that airline. And then I'm going to be building a bracket. It doesn't include one, but I'm going to build a bracket that'll go off that top diff bolt up to that bracket for the brake line junction. Just peace of mind, make it a little bit taller. So I'm not overextending anything. Then I have to figure out some way to um, tie up those emergency brake cables. But other than that, Rear is done, the U-bolts are torqued, so should be all right. And now I have the rear all buttoned up. As you can see, those spacers I was talking about, uh, it's just four inches tall, um, which is the same size as the block here. And then I built a bracket, if you can see it, there it is. It's uh, two and a quarter long, and then the holes are inch and a half apart. It's not a huge bracket, but it's something. I just didn't like the way it was kind of pulling on that brake line junction, so. Added that in there, looks pretty good. And uh, e-brake cables are all routed. I put the top one back in this bracket and then the bottom one is zip tied here and they are tied up out of the way. So that pretty much concludes the back, but I'm gonna leave the wheels off because the next thing I'm going into is the rock lights. So I have a set of plastic wheel liners that go in the back here and they actually cover up this frame rail, which is nice. So my plan was to mount them to the plastic shield and then I could stick the shield in here and then I put the wheel back on because it'd be a bit of a fight to try and get the shield in here with the wheel on. And these are the plastic liners I was talking about. I uh, don't even know who makes them really. I just had them sitting around from previous trucks. So I figured I'd throw them in here. Um, 50, 50 feet of, of red and black wiring. I believe it's like a 20 gauge or something. You really don't need much at all for these LEDs. And this is a set of eight white 
LEDs off of Amazon. I saw Ryan Mayer actually use these on both of his trucks and he said they're pretty good. So that was my plan. I was gonna put two in each wheel well, one about there, one about there, and then the same thing for the front, which is why I pulled the wheel liner out when I was doing the front. So next thing, I'm gonna be drilling some holes, mounting these up and then start running wiring. This is what I'm doing for these rear ones. Um, I'm just routing the wiring from the back end up to the front, tying them together into one, and then just looming them, giving them a decent amount of length so that when I put these up in the truck, I can uh, just run that down to the frame and then wire them in from there. Rock lights are all finished up. I installed all, all four fender liners and then that back corner ran it across, tied it in with that one, then ran up this frame rail here with all the other wiring, um, came up over here and then the passenger side went across, across the engine bay over to this side. That's what you see right here. And then this is the, all the wiring for it. And then I came down here and I have a waterproof relay that is controlling it all. I know this is probably way overkill for just rock lights, but better to be overkill than not. So then I just have that hooked right up to the battery here. And then the one where it runs back inside the cab to that switch panel that I made in the last video. And these are really quite bright. You get what you pay for, right? Um, these were probably, I wanna say 80 or 90 bucks for the set of eight, which isn't a horrible price. and. Uh, you do get a decent amount of light output. Obviously it's light in here, so you can't really tell, but I'll show a clip in the dark and then you can judge for yourself. So the last major thing I really have planned for the truck right now, during this stage anyway, um, is these power steps. I've always wanted power steps on a vehicle and I couldn't really ever justify the price to buy them new. Cause up here in Canada, you'd be paying probably two grand for a decent set of uh, new steps, whether that be amp or RPP or whatever. So then I saw this set of steps. Um, this is just one of the brackets from them. They're on Marketplace and uh, these are actually for a Ford Super Duty, which is why they have a flat mounting surface with the four holes right there. Um, these came up for about 500 bucks and I couldn't really pass it up. That's both boards, um, all four brackets with two motors and uh, your harness and your module and everything. I really couldn't turn it down. I figured there's a way I could modify them. And um, it involved cutting the top off so that it fit in the GM rocker, the inner rocker, and then GM, they have one bolt up here and then they have one bolt down here on the pinch weld where the inner and outer rockers meet. That's how they mount their uh, their side steps. Now Ford uses the four bolts on the inner rocker. So I had a set of these built up for me. Um, bottom holes threaded to thread into the pinch weld there. And I have another one here that goes into the inner rocker. So I have four of these, two per side. And uh, basically these go up against the inner rocker panel. And then all four of these holes are threaded for 516's hardware so that this can go on to here. Now, the one thing I was concerned about is rusting. When you put a flat plate against a flat plate in a spot that's already somewhat rusty, you're gonna get some rust. So I wanted a way to try and keep the water out from in between the two pieces, and that's where this comes in. 
This is bedding and glazing compound. It's got many different purposes. I've used it before with old school windshields with the uh, with the rubber gasket around them. If you don't want them to leak, you can put this in there. And basically this doesn't dry hard. It's kind of a waxy product. And the whole idea is that it won't dry. So then you won't get any rust in there and it'll seal everything up. So my idea is if I put a layer just a thin layer on here. And then when this butts up against the inner rocker, I will have some sort of coating in here so that water can't get in. That's my theory anyway. Don't know if it's really gonna work, but this was the only thing I could really think of that would work because I needed something that wasn't gonna dry that was also thick enough. So I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm going to mount all the steps and everything up and then uh, I'm gonna start wiring them into the truck. So with the steps all mounted on both sides, I uh, figured I would do the wiring off camera. As you can see, they tuck away really nice. Um, you can't even really see them when you're standing at eye level. And then when you open the door, she comes down. It sticks out a decent ways. It's not as much as um, the steps for these trucks, but it's still enough for you to lift your leg and you can get a good step into it. And then pulls the door, waits two seconds. And then it goes back up. Same with when you the back door. And if you close it right away, they go up right away. So one thing on these trucks, um, I thought there was gonna be one trigger wire that worked for both doors, but actually there's the trigger wire down, down in here, the trigger wire for the rear door. Um, it grounds out when you open the door. And then for the front door, you have to actually come up into the window switch, pull the door panel off, run a wire down through your pass through grommet there and then in your kick panel. So then uh, when I had the two wires merged together, I had to use diodes so that they didn't uh, cross paths when one door was open and one wasn't. Um, could create a shortened circuit, not really too sure, but I put the diodes in anyway. They work now, both sides are done and uh, I'm pretty happy with them. They work as they should and uh, hopefully this will help save my seats from getting worn out and torn from jumping in and out of this thing. So that's gonna do it for this video. We're almost wrapped up with this truck. Rock lights and steps are done. Um, I have the new knuckles actually sitting on the floor over there, the right knuckles. So I will be installing those off camera because it's the same process that I just did. So that shouldn't take me too long. And then in the next video, you should see wheels and tires, hopefully going to pick those up this weekend, get those mounted up and on the truck. And I'm also trying to figure out pinion angle right now because the rough country blocks have so much of a taper to them that put me at a negative angle on the rear axle there. So currently working on getting either a shim or building a new block so that I can correct that angle so that I don't get any vibrations. But that'll be in the next video, mounting wheels and tires next video. So hopefully that should be the last video on this Duramax. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to like this video. Hopefully this helped out if you are looking to install rock lights or power steps on your truck. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one.